I got the idea from watching a, a television special on the history of the Jews in America. I'm, I'm watching the show and there's, you know, the usual stuff about the Jewish population and how it came here and so forth. And all of a sudden, there's an old photograph of a group of American Indians and a young man up in the corner. He's got curly hair and a mustache, certainly doesn't look like an Indian. And the voiceover says, this is Julius Meyer, uh, a Jewish immigrant who came to the United States after the Civil War. And he ended up being the interpreter for many of the famous Indian chiefs of the late 19th century. I couldn't believe my ears. I said, I gotta find out more about this guy. And I started to research him, and I found out that not only did he speak six or seven different Indian dialects and was friends with many of the famous Indians and Indian chiefs of the period, but he also died under incredibly mysterious circumstances, which made him even more interesting. He was found dead in Hanscom Park in Omaha, Nebraska in 1909 with two bullets in him and declared a suicide. I said, how is that possible? So the combination of his story, the fact that he was an important Indian trader, an important person in Omaha, the fact that he was a friend to the native population, and the circumstances of his death made me think that he'd be an incredible subject for a book. Alexander Hermann, at the time, was the most famous magician in America, and he was the most famous magician in America before Houdini. The reason I decided to include Alexander in it was because of an actual true incident that occurred between Alexander and Julius Meyer. Uh, Alexander actually went to a Ponca Indian camp under the auspices of Julius Meyer and performed a show for the Indians there. And of course they were amazed. And that night when Alexander went to sleep, there was an attempt on his life. Uh, one of the Indians decided that his hat was magical and tried to kill him for it. Um, he was saved just in time. So when I was doing the research and I found out about that incident, I said, that's incredible. I've got to include this person in the book. And one of the things I said to myself, well, how would Julius know Alexander? And I did some more research and found out that Alexander's mother's maiden name was Meyer. And I said, the only way they could have known each other was that they were related. So I made them cousins in the book. Having Alexander in the book was like a gift. You know, what writer doesn't want to put a, a magician in a story? Anytime I, I write something, I try to include characters that will be highly entertaining and interesting for the reader, but I don't always know where they're going to come from. When it came to Prophet John McGarrigal, the clairvoyant Indian scout, that was really interesting because in the book, Julius has to go into a little shack because it's too cold for his stagecoach to continue. Well, when he gets into the room, there's this guy in there. Now, I didn't expect him to be in there. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know why he was in my story. So I sort of looked at him in my mind's eye, and he was sort of a thin, gray, old Indian scout, the kind of guys you used to see in the old Western movies who talked like this, you know, the old Gabby Hayes type. Looked at him a little bit more, and I said, oh, he's clairvoyant. He's got second sight. Now, I didn't know why he was clairvoyant. I didn't have any idea how that clairvoyance was going to figure in my story, but I just said, well, he's here. I'm not going to tell him to beat it. They say that when something happens by itself, when you're writing a story, you got to go with it. And I went with it, and he turned out to be a very important character in the novel. My first intention with any book is to entertain the reader. I like a good, what they used to call a good ripping yarn. 
uh, and I hope people will enjoy the action and the adventure and the romance. But one thing I do hope that people take away is this idea, can you actually see the Holocaust of your own people coming in the Holocaust of another? Can Julius and Alexander see what might happen to them in a relatively short period of time historically because of what's happening to the Indians, because of the genocide that's being committed against them? And I hope that's also part of what people take away from when they read this book.